Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here today with a sneak peek into the not too shabby April box of the month called Lazy Time. For today's card, I am using one of the Sam sets in the box called Time to Relax. And this one really spoke to me because I generally like flowers. The florals in this particular set look sketchy and I really like that. So I decided to create a whole background using it and I placed the three flowers on their individual stamp blocks because I just wanted to create a design. Using a Misty is great and everything, but when you want to just stamp and create a design more freely, it's a lot easier to use stamp blocks. So that's what I'm doing and I will be stamping in a diagonal pattern on this card panel. This is Canson XL watercolor paper because I do plan to watercolor this background. I'm just filling out that area and rounding out the design and any gaps that I might have I'm actually going to go in with the leaf that is also in this stamp set and kind of fill in any of those areas that look a little bit empty. I thought that really rounded out the design and I really liked how it looked. I did go a little extra with the floral designs because I plan to have the girl on the bottom right hand corner because this background ends up being kind of busy you kind of pull away focus from the girl and we'll be able to solve that with a piece of vellum layer on and that softens the background so your eye does go to the little girl that I'm using. For the coloring today I am using Ink on 3's Atelier Ink Reinkers. These can be used to refill your ink pad or as standalone watercolors so they're super versatile and I am using them as watercolors today. I went in and did a little bit of underpainting using the Beasting Yellow and I really wanted a light soft look for that. I've been seeing a lot of tutorials with underpainting and I just really like how it looks. This wasn't necessarily what I was aiming for when I started out doing this card, but I am really happy with how it turned out. So I had the best intentions going into this card. I really wanted to do precise coloring with watercoloring and like with shading and all of that. By the time that I got to the fourth leaf or so, I already colored outside the lines, so I kind of just decided to go with it and do messy watercoloring. So I'll actually go back with the leaves and purposely color outside the line, and I think it ends up looking intentional. So for the florals, I decided to stick with red, orange, and purple. For the first set of flowers that are all the same, I went in with red and dropped in some colors of orange. For my second set of florals, I went in with purple with red. And then by the third set of flowers, it ended up looking like the first set. It looks very orange. I did add a bit more red into those florals because it looks more like roses. I really liked how it turned out and I don't think it's a big deal. I was just freely watercoloring. I think if I wanted to be more precise, I probably should have used a smaller brush. I decided just to stick with the messy feeling of it and I think it works because of the sketchy feel of the florals. So if you are interested in this particular stamp set, it will be releasing April 7th over at the Not Too Shabby shop. It has a box. There are other items that are in it. So if you're curious to see, there have been sneak peeks done by Jamie, who is the owner of the store, and she will be showing different products that you will be getting in the box and it's just really fun. So it definitely goes with this lazy time theme and I am really loving it. There will also be a video hop creating scene cards and I love my scene cards so I haven't done the video yet. I haven't really decided what I was gonna do but these def the stamp sets in this box actually work really well together. So I'm thinking about creating a whole card using a bunch of the different items from each of the stamp sets to create one card. So we'll see how that turns out when I actually get to it. For the girl, I stamped her on normal cardstock, just Nina 80 pound cardstock, and I'm coloring her in with Copic markers. The girl is actually pretty thin and the little areas are really small, so you probably could just use one Copic marker to color up each of the areas but I'm just extra like this. I like the dimension so I will go in with three Copic markers per area. I didn't realize that her outfit was actually um, a unicorn bathrobe which I think is super adorable. I didn't realize that until I started coloring it and looking at the details and sometimes you miss those details because you just don't pay that close of attention 
And this is one of the things that I didn't even realize until I stamped it and started coloring it. So as you can see, the background is kind of busy. So we are going to use a piece of vellum to kind of act as a buffer between the background and the little girl. The only problem is that vellum is see-through. So if you have liquid adhesive or even double-sided tape, you can see it on the other side. So usually when you use vellum, you have two options. One is to completely cover the piece of vellum using double-sided tape and then die cutting or you are very strategic with how you add adhesive to your vellum. For this particular card, I didn't really think about it until I cut it out, and so I have to be very strategic, which is also why I am putting the circle kind of off the card panel so I can fold it and adhere it behind so we can make sure that piece of vellum doesn't fall off. Of course, you will also be adhering this to a card base, so that back portion of the vellum will also be adhered to a card base but I am going to be using a mix of double-sided tape and liquid adhesive to put this card together. And I thought that it would work really well and I was just very strategic with it and it worked out. For the sentiment itself, I went ahead and stamped it on white cardstock and trimmed down the strip. I will be hiding adhesive right behind the sentiment strip as well as behind the girl. For the girl herself, I am using liquid adhesive and being very careful not to put too much glue so it doesn't seep out on the sides. You won't be able to see it. This is also um, a matte glue so when it dries you hopefully don't see it. And I put it right in the vellum. Behind her, I will put double-sided adhesive directly on the vellum so that adhesive will adhere to my background and my card panel so it, the vellum won't pop up. But because there's not that much adhesive on that little girl, I wanted to make sure that I had additional adhesive to hold down the vellum. So I'm putting double-sided adhesive on the sentiment and I'm also going to slide in a piece of double-sided adhesive between the vellum and the card panel so the vellum has something else to stick to. You can avoid this if you use double-sided adhesive on the vellum and then die cut it, but I already went ahead and die cut it and I didn't want to waste this, so I just was very strategic about it. And it doesn't take that much work, but yeah. So this card is done. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's really pretty and I really loved how it turned out, even though I didn't expect the messy watercoloring. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you guys next time with another video. Bye.